Welcome back to... Oh, is it working? Yes, it is working. Welcome back to Corner <laughs> of the Society Adventures. I'm tormented by gnomes and joining me once again is our fantastic cast, Beatdown Casts, John Carmichael, a.k.a. Ninja Man Matt, and Pods of War. In our last episode, our intrepid explorers discovered that the angel killer is in fact like eight different people, all doing all sorts of heck of killing. They have separated after defeating and slaying the notorious gangster Gianni Pablo, and now they will reconvene at their favorite steakhouse to make their further plans. <laughs> I, I was probably going to write something a little fancier than that, but that's what we ended up with. So how's everyone doing today? Pretty darn awesome. Yeah, pretty good. I'm trying to find a good spot for my mic, but uh, besides that, we're good. Yep. I'm doing so good. I ran out of words. <laughs> Damn, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. pretty much just trying to keep myself distracted. As you know, everything's fine. We're fine. How are you in the outside world? Yeah. So let's let's completely ignore that and do <laughs> what <laughs> exactly? What uh, but, world? What are you talking about? Mm, the Never world of Northport. Ah. So when we last left our heroes. Asena and Gaston had taken the corpse of Gianni Pavlo back to Gaston's laboratory where he was going to pump it full of formaldehyde to preserve it for further insidious purposes and then stay up all night working on his new inventions. You've all hit level six. Uh, John Carmichael went back to the Essex Hotel into his office to meet with his assistants, Charlie and Ben. Everyone got a good full night's sleep. You awakened refreshed. If you recall, last time during your interrogation of Gianni Pavlo, not only did you learn some shocking information about the Angel Killer, but you also learned a great deal about Lincoln Giotto's headquarters, Fornacre, how to infiltrate it, and you learned that Dr. Zorbius Brandt has a secret laboratory in the sub-basement underneath the mansion. You agreed to meet at the Wound the next day, which is on the very edge of Torton, in order to eat a delicious steak and figure out your next plans. Before we get to that, does anybody have any questions or business they need to attend to? No. Perfect. I, yeah, no, I can't I'm think hungry. beyond the steak. You That's know? fair. Exactly. That is the business for Asena. The <laughs> stakes have never been higher. All right. <laughs> I see what you did there. See, it's a play on words because a steak is both something that you can Matt, eat shut up. a carton food animal. <laughs> and it's also a little spike that you can put into the ground and do various things with. Matt, follow me, silence! The double entendre, you know. <laughs> All right, let me see. Do I have a, like, a, like a nice restaurant here? Yeah, we'll go with this. Bam. Go oh my Instagram. goodness. <laughs> I thought we were at the wound, not like Lincoln Giotto's Italian... Pisteria. Look, I'll be honest. I would, said, I would have said like the pie, like a pie baking contest at a fair. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Fun fact. Also, we look I like we're getting robbed. Nice steakhouse. <laughs> Finding decent assets for 1930s era restaurants is really difficult, you guys. <laughs> I'm just giving you Sorry, crap. I'm starting to pick up on that. Yeah, I've, I've had to cobble things together here and there. It's almost all like Cthulhu stuff. That's almost the only uh, digital yeah, assets yeah, yeah. you're going to find. So this is heavily pieced together. Dude, what am I eating? Uh, I is have no... Turkey dinner? What is that? I, kinda, I think, honestly, these were all in the Roll20 default assets, and I think it's all Thanksgiving food. That's awesome, because like I it. thought that was curry, and then I zoomed in on the mashed potatoes. <laughs> Enhance! And also the cranberry sauce. Yes, and the corn on the cob. All right, I chat has given point. okay. Chat has given me inspiration for raising the stakes. Matt disadvantage for explaining the steak joke. <laughs> and Random beat down uh, inspiration so he doesn't feel left out. Hey, hell yeah! Which I mean, leads me to believe that possibly Asena was supposed to get the other inspiration, <laughs> but it wasn't entirely clear from chat, so. All right, you can uh, steal it. I have a uh, six. Oh my god! Ah, uh, there we go. Wow. Pod two. Hey, oh, now god. you have seven. Oh, Congratulations. I have seven now. I should spend it. Agreed. <laughs> All right. 
So you've gathered here. Uh, ben is sitting at the far side of the table. He's not eating anything. He's just occasionally drinking water directly from the pitcher. Whenever he does oh, steam. Here. Yep. Ben and Charlie are both in residence. Charlie's just <laughs> scorfing up everything that lands in front of him. Yeah. That checks out. So nice of you to treat them to breakfast. Yeah, you know, it's, it's their weekly meal. You know, they've earned it. It's nice. Uh, ben, I've told you, though, uh, <laughs> not out of the pitcher. They, they they collect that directly and, you know, they serve it amongst many people. Yeah. Oh, it's, I guess unless it's one they left here, I guess it's fine. Yeah, never mind. I am incapable of transmitting pathological microbes. Yeah, same. <laughs> mm -hmm. Incorrect. Mm -hmm. You are made of meat. Yeah. Are you not? Oh, it's Factor. good to get that confirmation because, you know, with John, we never know. Yeah, Gaston, remember, he's, uh, he's an ice demon. So he doesn't, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. He, he takes another just pour out of the pitcher of water, and as he does, like, uh, the haze fog, like, his, he, you can see his breath because of the conflict uh, of temperatures. There's this weird crackling. Refreshing. <laughs> well, that's strange. So anyways, uh, Charlie, if you could take a moment to uh, quit, you know, gabbing on the food there. Uh, what did you guys want to share? All right, well, while you were running around town doing all kinds of things, which apparently you found some stuff that might invalidate some of our research, like, entirely. That's about accurate, yeah. Anyways, uh, we've been going through all the stuff that you found over at Foster Talon's apartment. And he, he gets this manila envelope that's covered in coffee stains and a little bit of grease. Some of it's old from the office, some of it's new from this restaurant. And he sets it down and he just starts pulling out all sorts of stuff. Some of it is, he'll, he's gonna shove aside this fruit here, shove aside this. Some of this is from Foster Talon's apartment. Some of it is stuff that they found in newspaper clippings and such. Opens up the file. Okay, you're here, you're here, you're here. Yeah, that's, uh, you're dead over here. You're somewhere here, you go over here. Uh, I don't know where to put you. Or, oh, yeah, no, I know where to put you. Okay, yeah, you go back in the folder. Yep, all right. Uh, yep, 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 okay. Uh, here's, yeah, he pulls out. He doesn't actually have a photo of you, Asena, because 1930s tech, that'd be weird. But uh, <laughs> this bowl of, this this plate full of fruit will represent Asena. <laughs> <laughs> I approve. He has to shove some of his stuff out of the way. Clank, clank. Okay, yep. Uh, you're up, yep Wait, uh, why am I on the table? We're gonna talk about that. Oh. There's some weird stuff going on. Okay. So. Here's what we know. About 22 years ago, the Army of the Eclipse... An old secret society dedicated to revealing the secrets of the cosmos and enlightening all of humanity and all this sort of stuff. They sent an expedition to the Zolquian jungles. So here we have the army of the Eclipse. Asena, the photo we found in Foster Town's apartment, has the airship that you described you were you lived in. You lived in its wreckage. There's some, we don't know how that's connected, but apparently you grew up in the wreckage of this secret society's secret jungle expedition 22 years ago. Uh, Ralzman is here too. We'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. So, uh, we've got the Army of the Eclipse. They go on their expedition. Ten months ago, the Army of the Eclipse bombs Mercury City Hospital. Uh, he, he grabs his plate of food and just puts it right here. The bombing, right? Uh, and there. They bombed the hospital. Just weeks afterwards, the angel killings start. Now, you found out something about Mercury City Hospital bombing, 
And Foster Talon was looking into this guy here. He points at this photo. Lawrence Booker Green. He was the mortician, the medical examiner at Mercury City, Mercury City Hospital. What we also know is that up until recently, all the angel killer victims had their spinal cords separated, surgically cut. Yep, disgusting. And whoever it was... Kind of cool. Recently, the new medical examiner for the city of Northport went missing. And after he went missing, the next victim, Foster Talon, his spinal cord was not severed, and he came back from the dead as some kind of a horrible thing. Uh, what else? What else? What else? So... The bombing, the whole point of the bombing that this secret society put on was to kill this guy who may know something about the process by which the angel killings occurred. And then after the bombing is when they started. And that brings us to Sun Jia, who supposedly, according to your new information, one of the killers. We know that there are a bunch of different killers based on what you told us. Every single time that the angel killings stop, the killer changes. We know also that the angel killings are linked to the eight evil thoughts, which is an ancient Zolkwian myth about the creation of the world. Why is this important? Because this secret society was going off to the Zolkwian jungles to do who knows what, and now all, all these ritual killings are happening linked to Zolkwian myth. So there's a connection there of some kind. Uh, where was I? Ben leans over and mutters down to him. The criminal. Duh, yeah, the criminal. Okay, so. Sun Jia, who's the mist who may be the mystery lady that you saw when Foster Talon was killed, is the daughter of Mr. Lo, who's the head of the Triple Union Society. The Triple Union Society hates the column. Lincoln Giotto's the boss of that. Gianni Pavlo is one of those guys. And they're working with Dr. Zorbius. I was gonna say. Yeah. <clears throat> ben shifts slightly in his chair, and you can f hear the floor creak underneath him. They're chasing, the column is chasing after Sun Jia with the help of Dr. Zorbius, who knows that there's something weird about her, right? So they're all working together. Now, we think they're just working together to get her in order to screw over these guys, but Dr. Zorbius knows something up, and so he's getting help, and he's helping Lincoln Giotto in exchange for Lincoln Giotto helping him with his research, and Lincoln Giotto has a kid who Dr. Zorbius is protecting. Ben puts his hand over Charlie for a moment. We believe the killings are linked to the army of the Eclipse. That's a pretty extreme uh, connection there. Right. So, uh, all that is to say, you just found out a bunch of stuff you've, uh, from Gianni. He knows that the mayor's son, who we didn't have time to pull a file on because he was never supposed to be part of this research, is supposedly behind all this. So there's that. Uh, you found out a bunch of stuff about Thornacre. We know that the mayor and his son have been talking to... Lincoln Giotto at the column. Uh, we need something for the mayor. He grabs the pitcher. <laughs> okay, the mayor. Do you think the pitcher's the right thing for the mayor? I I mean, I defer. What you got? Well, I don't know. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, so the mayor is supposedly working with Lincoln Giotto in order to find Lawrence Booker Green. But the mayor is also, supposedly, his kid is the one who started all this business, and so Sun Jia should be working for him. So maybe he's working with both of them and not telling them what he's up to. 
Okay. I, I don't really know what to make of that, aside from we need to investigate all these people. Uh, yeah. But here's what we were thinking, all right? You, ha you have some options at this point if you want to learn more. All uh, right, you've learned a lot about Thornacre and how to get in. So if you can find out what Lincoln Giotto's business is with the mayor and his son, that could lead you straight to solving this whole thing. Dr. Zorbius knows more than he's talking about. If you can find his research, figure out what he knows about Sunja and the Angel Killers, he might be able to reveal some information for you. Also, uh, yeah, so, da, 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 steal doc so you can infiltrate Thornacre, interrogate people and look for clues about the mayor, find the lair of Dr. Zorbius and steal his research notes to figure out what he's up to. But there's some other things going on here, too. The Army of the Eclipse, when they did the bombing at Mercury City Hospital, supposedly, the Carrington family, some of the richest folk in all of Northport, were members of the Army of the Eclipse. But the investigation came up short, said that they were completely exonerated. Foster was still looking into them, and Jasmine Ruiz Carrington sued the crap out of him to get him to stop. So, aside from busting into Thornacre and stealing Dr. Zorbius' notes, if you want to learn more about the Army of the Eclipse, you ought to talk to the Carringtons. At that point, John's going to turn to Grim, or Ben, rather. Ben Grimm. Hey, uh, I had you, I had you working for them for a while. You were actually working alongside Miss Ruiz as a bodyguard, as I recall. That is correct. Did you overhear anything about this Arm of the Eclipse business when you were there? She is unwilling to discuss any mention of this esoteric order upsets her tremendously it may be possible to speak with her even though your former apprentice may have salted that particular field yeah 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 for john not for uh other individuals we can probably true. say something on true who 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 is other who are you, what are you saying are we oh. other yeah yeah you guys just like last time ah uh, yeah. yeah 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 that checks out <sighs> I don't know if I want to go back there. Oh, this would be an entirely new area. Instead of going to Xavier's school for youngsters, you'd be heading off to the Big Apple, uh, going to one of those giant skyscrapers. That's where they usually hang out. I think it's fair to assume that I'm going to be doing a lot more of the talking, so... Yeah, I actually am thinking I'm going to be trying to hit up... Uh, what's that old man's name? Aliosis, yeah, Aliosis. I'm gonna be trying to see what I can pull those strings. That's the uh, the grandpappy. Uh, Philip is the upstart new architect. Uh, Jasmine is his mother, and uh, Aliosis is, I believe, a, her husband, her well, her dead husband's relation. Aliosis is the grandfather. Jasmine is his daughter-in-law. Philip yep. is her son. Yep, that tracks, that tracks. So how about this? Uh, what if, when we do this, we can split, there's three of us, there's three of them. If I could help get you guys an audience, um, I'll go see what I can find out from the old man. Uh, gosh, let's see. Hey, mate, from what I know, both of these individuals have at least somewhat of a hand in the movie business, right? No, they are actually uninvolved. Oh. Entirely. Yeah. yeah. I thought Philip was, uh, oh no, he's dating Donahue, not a starlet. Yes, he is. He's dating the woman who is funding and running the school for the gifted. In fact, he's helping bankroll that project. Yeah, he's also building Tomorrowland or whatever. Yes, Tomorrowtown in the new financial district. Well, how about this? You guys draw straws, figure out which one you want to go after. And uh, I think we're doing Thornacre though first, right? This is we're going to be setting these things up for uh, eventuality. Yeah. yeah, I think we have I to go tonight. Fair. Yeah, we have way more on Thornacre than we would have imagined going into last night. So I think we should just use that right away, especially because um, the original password we got from Johnny is gone. So you're, 
either we still Quest get not. to use that today or you that expires have to... this is the last day it's usable this is yep. the last day it's usable so we could just use it agreed yeah no we gotta cash that password in before we lose it and yeah. uh and then from there i mean i figured regardless of what our intentions are Thornacre's gonna turn into a into a mess. I mean, let's be honest. Even if we sneak our way in there, something awful is gonna happen. Either by the time we get to the lab, or if we interact with one of the other mobsters. Because let's just put it this way, Gaston, you don't have a great track record with letting mobsters live. So I mean, it's the, I don't kill all of them. Just the really, really bad ones. Yeah, but those are the ones that draw the most attention when they go missing. Yeah, but can't you look like Johnny? Well, yeah, no, Johnny's fine. It's just I can't look like every little Tom, Dick, and Sally you run across and put a bullet through. You know what I mean? Oh, come on. I'm not going to kill all of We've them. We've been Maybe we'll really good at sleep. dressing up like people, though. That's actually true. Also, yeah, when absolutely. we went to um, Factory, whose name escapes me. Keller was, Industrial, uh, yeah. Keller Industrials. I t took a long time for them. In fact, I got into Johnny's room before anyone knew I was anyone. Well, yeah, but getting into Pablo's room. Mission. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, here's the thing. First of all, uh, sorry for cutting you guys off. Uh, ben, uh, Charlie, you guys got anything else for us? Or is this kind of the crux of it? Charlie shifts uncomfortably in his chair for a moment. And he glances over at Asena. There's, uh, there's another lead we haven't followed up on yet. Ralzamon was looking for Foster Talon's body. He knew something was going to happen. He sent his boys after it. I don't know what he knows, uh, but I know where to find his guys. Back in Aylberg. The group that I used to run with before he just gestures over at John. Ralzamon likes to take folks who have hit rock bottom and he just reaches into their heads and peels out the part of them that needs dope or or booze or whatever it is and pulls that away from them in exchange for their loyalty in exchange for dropping some part of himself in there instead he shakes uncomfortably he he knows something maybe it's just to screw with his rival zorbius maybe it's something deeper but he's a he's a student of Forbidden ancient esoteric arts. There's a chance he could know a lot about this. Maybe some of the secrets of the Society of the Eclipse. Might be worth hitting up my old gang and beating the crap out of them until they talk. Interested? Interested? And, uh, if you happen to go that way, I think my brother's still pushing dope around Aylberg. I haven't heard from him, but I wouldn't expect to, so... Any news you would have about him would mean a lot. Hey, Charlie, speaking of which, what was it that Ralzamon took from you originally? I was hooked pretty bad. I was... Yeah, that tracks. Yeah. He scratches his arm absently. There is one other possibility. The detective you worked with in the past, Miss Rain... Yes, yes, that's right, Nancy. She was assigned to investigate Lawrence Booker Green after the bombing. Perhaps she has some leads that never panned out for his location. That's a really good point. You know, from what I can tell here, We've got a few different things based off of what you guys had already come up and then with the new information that we had here. Uh, Miss Rain is an excellent point. Uh, I think I think we should hit that one up as a team because she can be very intimidating and it'd be nice to have some people backing me up so I don't end up getting cowed by her. Uh, we need to figure out what's going on with Rousamon. Uh, Got to track down this gang that Charlie mentioned and see if we can get some info on his brother. In regards to the Thornacre base, aside from what you guys covered here, we need to make sure we find out what Dre and Warner are doing. It seems like there's a lot of hands in this Northport pie, and we got to figure out where all these different allegiances end up lying, because eventually someone's going to end up shit in the bed, and I really hope we don't get covered in it. 
Likewise, we need so, to talk to Zorbius. Uh, yeah, I feel like Zorbius first would be ideal just because I think he knows he's going to end up knowing a lot more about the angel killers. I think given how much interest he seems to have in them. Yeah. And he and there's a good chance we find him in Thornacre, right? Oh, yeah, that secret lab. I mean, who? I mean, gosh, we've been to your lab. Well, I've been there once. You guys have been there a couple times just since we started hanging out. Uh, basically, you have a secret lab. You go use it. You know what I mean? You don't leave those things abandoned. Yeah, that's true. The waiter comes by and goes to refill the mayor, and Charlie waves him off. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. That's the mayor. Don't touch him. <laughs> Did he just try to fill the mayor with water? Yeah, I think we... Well... Nope, never mind, not going to say it. Anyways. Um, uh, yeah, that's where my head was, too. And yeah, and aside from that, uh, we need to investigate your connection, uh, Asena, with Rousamon, the Eclipse. There's a lot of True. pieces on the board, and honestly, I feel like a lot of them, I don't want to use the word scapegoat, but here's the thing. There's a lot of information on here, and uh, only so much of it is going to be inherently pertinent. So I think we're going to need to sift through exactly what we want to tackle. And I feel like Thornacre is number one on our list. Uh, aside from that, it could end up coming up short, but checking out Charlie's old gang, that could end up being a crapshoot, or it can be the le biggest lead that we need. Likewise, same thing. Nancy Rain might have nothing, but she might have something. And then finally, depending on how we can shake them down, the Carringtons might have just what we need, or they might have nothing. This I think it's thing. obvious that we have to go to Thornacre first. Today's oh, the yeah. last day. And we have to go there, but I don't know how I feel about checking out these Ralzamon people. I mean, what? What if we killed them? Would that make you feel better? But can we kill him? Ralzamon, master of the unknown. Not so sure. A bunch of uh, I mean, out gangsters. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gangsters are no issue, but somebody that can come into my mind, I'm not very fond of. Charlie looks side to side knowingly. Other thing is, is nobody's ever actually seen the guy. You just hear him, see him in your head, feel his presence. Nobody actually knows where he is. Well, that explains the nickname. And the how moniker. I'm, I'm sorry, but he didn't make himself known to any of you two? To us? No, not me. Mate, just to double check her, I've been tooling around here for a while, getting my nose in a lot of places. I've never had a vision of this Rousamon other than helping out Charlie, right? Yeah, the one time you encountered him was when you were in Charlie's mind, basically removing the... Uh, when Ralzamon removed Charlie's addiction, he also installed something to force loyalty into Charlie's mind, and if that was ever removed, it would basically destroy him. And so John did something awful in order to save Charlie's life and replace the mind control with a horrible curse that basically blocked the mind control. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's the only time you've seen him, and you, you saw him in the mindscape, the way that he, you know, projects himself. So there's yeah. no telling what his true face is. Most people who hey. get a mental vision of him see something similar to what Asena saw. Yeah, no, absolutely. Hey, uh, I look over towards uh, Gaston and Ben. Guys, I gotta, I gotta use the powder room. Uh, can you guys escort me real quick? I think, uh, I think uh, there's someone watching us, and I want to make sure that, you know, nothing happens and I kind of give Ben one of those like let's go eyes okay <laughs> and I uh I get up and just put a hand on Gaston's shoulder hey come on uh give me a hand real quick uh sure and I leave uh Charlie at the table with Asena and I turn back and give uh, Charlie a little like now's the time buddy Charlie oh, I, okay I I, I, uh, I sent him a message I'm not realizing <laughs> he looks lost when, when you when you like 
give him this knowing look. He looks totally lost. I realize he can't read my mind, even though we share a connection. And I sent him a little message like, hey, uh, explain to her that this Rousamon thing is not going to be a big deal. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, she was like real confused. She was just looking around, like, "Why are they leaving?" Ch Charlie fusses with his hat, which he only barely rem remembered to remove while he was indoors. Uh, looks across the table at all the pictures and food and cutlery that's been laid out, and you know the the mayor pitcher that's sitting there. And he'll just say, "So, w what happened?" I saw it on your face, you seen him. Uh, um, yeah, I, I did. We, it was back when we were in the morgue. Um, and I don't, I don't really know what happened. I saw him and I couldn't do anything. I mean, you're, you're a strong guy yourself. And mm. it's, I don't know. I'm normally always in control and able to take on anybody, and all of a sudden, I just couldn't move. Hmm. That's, uh... I respect that. I was never much in control of my own life. And I thought that what he had to give me, that, that sense of, of that will, that strength, I didn't have to fight my own battles. I didn't have to say no anymore. He could do it for me, and I felt good at the time, but the the price he demanded in return was total loyalty. And uh, when you go from someone like that protecting you to someone like that wanting to crush you, it's the scariest thing I've ever seen. And you're way stronger than me. He looks at his somewhat scrawny if wiry muscles, <laughs> but like the way he works, the way he gets in your head, none of that matters anymore. The only thing that helped was, well, I bought my freedom with nightmares. It was worth it. He sips awkwardly from a cup. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> I don't know where he gets his power from, but the world would be a better place without him. So you don't see him anymore? No, I don't. And why, I mean, why do you think that he did that to me and not the other two? I don't know. Um, I mean, you're special. There's things you can do. There's... Everyone can do something. Yeah. But this whole business with you being in that airship that went to the jungles years ago and him knowing about this zombie detective nonsense I think he might know where you come from. I think if you can tra track him back to wherever he is you might be able to find out more. And if nothing else, you can get the ghost of his face out of your head by punching it. <laughs> That's true. I just don't want him to use that against me, you know? Well, you don't mind having a horrible curse that haunts you every single night with screaming nightmares of thorns bursting from your flesh? Then, you know, talk to Johnny. I'm sure he can help you out. <laughs> Maybe oh he can set me up with a better one. <laughs> Yeah, if he does it for you, let me know. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the other side of the room... I am incapable of using this equipment. A massive, oh. gigantic frame fills the entire toilet stall, just standing there with the, the huge hat sticking out of the top. Yeah, I figure uh, Gaston, John, and uh, Ben are just crammed into one stall. Like, this is not like a... I was giving them time to have a chat. We're not really going to use the restroom unless you unless you got a guest on. I don't know. There are two additional stalls in this room, and I occupy a great deal of space. No, no, but that's the point, though. You don't want to be rude. What if someone needs to use this thing? We're just kind of hang out here for a few minutes. 
I say as I'm pressed up against <laughs> Ben's chest, like speaking like up into his neck and just, oh, I get my arm out of the way. Sorry, Gaston, I don't mean to. Sorry. Uh, okay, yeah. Oh, I thought I thought this whole thing was because you saw someone and we were about to fight. Oh, no, 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 that was a ruse. No, I'm just giving Charlie enough time since he, he and Senna kind of went through the same thing and she's been really, you know, freaked out about this whole Rousamon thing. I feel like not somebody who, and I say this whole thing like contorted in a weird, like, yeah, just like pressed up against the back of the stall. John's got one of his feet like up on top of the toilet and it slips in. Ah, oh, god damn. Uh, I know I figured she could use somebody to talk to that has gone through it. You know, they would know a little more like, you know, when, when someone's going through a thing and you're like, oh, yes, the right thing to do is this. But like they they don't want to buy into it because, you know, you didn't do coke, too. And so I feel like, you know, <laughs> like, uh, you know, just he's a drug addict. You know, he, and I don't mean like that. Literally, I mean, like he was way deep in that cult stuff. And and now he's a lot better. And maybe having gone through the tunnel, he can help her through it, you know? The ghost of an evil tree is in his brain. Okay, you know what? You guys keep bringing that up like I wanted that to be a side effect. I, Wait, it, what? It, it kind of came with, with... Look, I, I've i said sorry for that enough, all right? I'm, I'm done with that, all right? It happened. It's done. He could have died. I think tree nightmares is better than death, okay? I got to deal with that crap on a daily basis anyway, so now I got a buddy. Are you guys, like, in the same... Is that how that works? Well, no, there was just, you know, long story short, there was a really evil tree and it kept killing people and I stopped oh, the evil tree, cool. but only nice. Basically, if you killed this evil tree, you became the evil tree. Um, so technically, I'm an evil tree. Um, look, it's it's weird. I'm not <laughs> convinced this description is accurate for the phenomenon. Uh, Neither I mean, am I. Inaccurate. I don't know what's happening. Look, don't worry about it. It's not pertinent to literally anything. So. Ah, okay. That is correct. Aside from Charlie, it's pertinent to him. Because he's, he's also. And, and, and I guess by extension, Asena. Is that what you're going to do to her? No, I don't I don't really. Well, here's the thing. He, uh, she never made a deal with Razamon, so that shouldn't be an issue. As long as she doesn't make a deal with Razamon, we're going to be okay. Uh, that's kind of what I'm hoping Charlie's going to. Wait, is that though. an option? It's kind of like a devil's bargain, as far as I'm aware. Like, he helps you with something, grants you a wish of some kind, whether that be very small or very large. I don't really know the details. And then you give him your unwavering and undying loyalty. And if you cross him, he'll kill you. Uh, that's all I really know about that. What's we'll to stop him from killing you normally? Uh, Meanwhile, at the table, Charlie is explaining to Asena how... Uh, the people who throw in with Ralzamon, they usually start out just like him, and there's actually a lot of them in Aelberg. I'm willing to bet you should be careful when you're walking around your place, because any one of those folk could be in with him. And once they're in with him, the deeper in they get with him, they start to become his voices, his hands. He can reach out through their presence. The, the more loyal they are, the more they become just like his eyes and ears out in the world. That's probably what happened to you. You met one of his true loyalists, and they just opened up their mind, and Ralzmon came right through it. So maybe... I mean, I never made a deal with the guy. Yeah, that's why he's not still with you right now. Like, he can only affect you when one of his is around, but hmm. he's got powers over the mind. You don't have to... You don't have to let him in. He'll come crashing through anyways. But only what through the minds of his loyal. I mean, I could try, but back in Elberg, I mean, no one messes with me over there. Yeah, that's because they're smart. I remember back before he plucked me out of there a couple of times, he ran afoul of you before everything went down. <laughs> he adjusts his shoulder and winces with the memory. Well. I guess I'm feeling a little bit more okay about it now. Maybe Gaston could make me some sort of one of his fancy helmets or something. Uh, yeah. Actually, it's not a bad idea. Is that a thing? Can I do that? You can certainly experiment with it. You None of your uh, inventions thus far have really dealt with like the mind or telepathic powers, etc. But that doesn't mean that it's not a direction you could take it. Uh, 
any party, feel free to reunite and end the scene at your guys' will. John just like kind of just Can we leave this all now? pull out his his phone like yeah I think it's been enough time it better be let's go and I kick the stall open and just all right okay. one two and I'm assuming Gaston and I spill out past Ben yeah as he just stands there taking up ninety percent of the stall the water has frozen my apologies. And as we all stumble out of the stall, there's just this little old man just sitting on one of the little couches that was mentioned by chat at the far end of the stall, just looking at this as they're waiting for whoever's in the other stall. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's not what you think. Uh, we were we were lost. There was a thing. And uh, young and man, heard... you don't have to explain a thing to me. Okay, I'm not cool, in a let's... position to judge your lifestyle. Pat, yep, pat. Yep. <laughs> And uh, I'm just washing my hands. Love <laughs> is love! Shake off. Wipe it on I'm my... just gonna walk out. Coat. Yep. <laughs> ben ducks underneath. And then as he's walking through the rest of the restaurant, like, he just knocks over one of those bust trays full of dirty dishes and such. Oops. Asina, as you and Charlie are talking, you hear this loud clattering. And you can see the rest of them returning from the restroom. What were they Ooh. doing in there? Yeah. Oh, man. You know, even though he doesn't eat, he still passes stuff, you know? And it was just like like a small dog, you know what I mean? It was awful. Uh, so you we didn't just, we have to go to the bathroom, did you? No. I mean, <laughs> yes. I read you like a book. <laughs> <laughs> no insight check required. <laughs> There are many mysteries of this world that John has yet to unravel. The physiology yeah. of the Imoth is one of those. Yeah, you can add that to the list of things I don't understand either. Hey, speaking of physiology, uh, mate, they want to cut you off during the explanation. With John's reliquary of, of knowledge and his, his own brain of brains, uh, does he have any idea what kind of entity, whether it be an undead or other kind of monster that he's encountered or read about in his travels, that when they kill something, they create a undead servitor or thrall? I mean, there's plenty of undead that could do that. Lots of different types. Whites, vampires, ghouls, shadows, wraiths, specters. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. So I, I know that they uh, they can. I just mean like in regards to this ritual, I, I, based off of what's being explained here. So he knows that this is a reanimated when he encountered Talon. It was a reanimated ghoul or some some kind. It was an animated undead. It drained life energy, so it wasn't a ghoul. It, it drained life energy, and there was a physical being that went about its death, at least as far as we can tell. Mm -hmm. uh, especially considering now we know that these the newly effectively turned or murdered individuals come back as something and then mm -hmm. go on to murder again so does that sound like one of those entities that he has read about or encountered yes uh it sounds like whites or vampires whites or vampires okay asena may be on to something as of like episode I'm one saying i've been saying it a lot we gotta listen to you more clearly. I, okay, so I watched a movie once and there were these things called vampires and they couldn't go out into the sun or else they would die, right? And then there's a sunlight gun. So what if Sunji is a vampire? I mean, that tracks considering, uh, you know, there's literally a gun made of, or a, a gun that shoots little sunlight balls. But here's the thing, though. From what I know, whites also have an aversion to sun. It doesn't, like, straight up kill them like vampires, but it's not fun. Well, so. I don't know what that is. Is it that in a movie? What do you mean when you it say not. not fun? Like, I what's mean, not, the extent of the sun bothers them? Uh, mate, can I make a... I would assume that's either an arcana or a religion check. I'd allow arcana. Okay. Would you like me to use my disadvantage or save it for something else? Uh, use your disadvantage. 
It's your your first major <laughs> role since we got started. Pepe hands. <laughs> a thirteen. Uh, thirteen. they it doesn't kill them, but it does weaken them. They can't see properly. They hate it, so it gives them disadvantage on everything, basically. Mm. I wonder if that's what they are because there was a there was doubt. Because we, we were talking about whether, because we asked Johnny whether or not the mayor's son would visit during the daytime, and that kind of ruled him out as a, or at least his father has one of those killers because of that. But now that you're saying such creatures exist, where you know, oh, they don't like the sun, but they can operate at in it, mm -hmm. so then maybe his father isn't really checked off for not being a angel killer. That's true. I feel like if the son is involved, it didn't make sense to me that the father wouldn't be. That's a I whole agree. line of investigation because the mayor's uh, bastard son keeps himself largely out of the public eye, whereas obviously his his father, you know, is a public figure, uh, constantly making appearances, and so on and so forth. Water. His his son is almost off the record. Hmm. Hmm. We'll keep that in mind. Well. Well. I'd say your little uh, bathroom ruse worked as uh, I'm feeling more confident about confronting these Relzamon people and learning more, so. If we want to go there after Thornacre, I'm not opposed. Progress, progress, progress. All right. I'm all <laughs> for it. So, oh, hey, by the way, I, I turn over to, to Grim and, uh, hey, Benny boy, did you happen to see, I gave you a list last night of uh, some of the information that we had gotten. We were able to ne connect Tobias Nash and Sunjia to Envy and Torpor. Were you able to take in his other dossiers that I gave you about a rich old lady, a movie star, female, things like that? And were you able to do any research last night or still looking that up? Charlie goes, oh, oh, and he pulls out the file with a list of people who were all notes on otherwise unconnected people that you found in Foster Talon's apartment. You may recall there were a couple uh, of photos lying around. There were some articles, from newspaper clippings and such. Ninjas. There were ninjas. Hmm. Okay, so Tobias Nash... Famous movie star, Felix Wiggins. Foster had a lot on this guy. He's a radio host. He's a columnist. Ah, He's a loudmouth. Yes. He's got a lot of angry opinions about stuff. This lady that Draken DeVry has been seen with, Natalie Adams, financier. Yes. <gasps> I met her. I met her, right? Yeah. Briefly, yeah, you briefly. did. Mm -hmm. And she gave me a really, really weird, like dangerous femme fatale kind of kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Like she was the kind of person that Draken was always carrying around his shoulder, but she seemed or elbow rather, whatever that's called. Uh, but she seemed like like she wasn't just a plus one. You know what I mean? There was more to that cat that met the eye. Mm. Okay. And then like Chester. Exactly. Actually, there's less to Chester than meets the eye. Ah, I mean, touche. <laughs> but yeah, the last one, Dorothy Emmersmith. She's the daughter of re the reclusive uh, Emmersmith. You know, he's the richest guy in the city. Made his fortune building bridges overseas years and years ago. She has a food column. She's a famous uh, foodie. She goes around reviewing like. You know, she, she writes for the newspaper and goes to all the fanciest restaurants and stuff like that. And she and her sisters have been spending old man Emmersmith's money as fast as they could. These are all people who Foster was looking into. And we didn't really know why at the time, but all this angel killer stuff you pulled up, I think you can consider all of these folks to be suspects. Okay, so the ritual... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Nope, that's all I had. Senna, you had something, right? Uh, it's dumb. No, no. It's dumb. Come on, no, let's hear it. Senna, we 
John and I just shoved our bodies into a single stall with that okay. guy as he points at Ben. So I don't think, I really don't think you have to worry about seeming or sounding stupid. I think we, John and I peaked today. I mean, I'm just, it, you, you got me when you said Dorothy's a foodie. Maybe he just wanted some good food. I want to go have food with her. How did you guys let him get away with it? I gesture over Gaston. You guys rake me over the coals for every little thing. He just talked about us putting our... Oh, God, forget it. <laughs> Charlie leans over. Gaston, it's a, it's, it's a pleasure working with you, by the way. Just wanted to point that out. Hey, you. Zip it. <laughs> we got rich old lady. Dorothy Emmersmith. Obvious. We got movie star male. Tobias Nash. Confirm. We've got radio host. Felix Wiggins. Easy. We've got a drug dealer. Could that possibly? No, it couldn't be. That'd be way too, that'd be way too easy. Hey, uh, Charlie, you said you haven't heard from your drug dealer brother in a while, right? Hmm. You know anything else about him other than, is he, he said he's in with Rousamon, right? I mean, he he's running with uh, the gangs down there. I don't know if he fell down the Rousamon hole. Okay, okay. I mean, so Rousamon's supposed to clean you up and get you off drugs, not help you sell them. So not everybody in your gang was connected to Rousamon then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was sort of once once you got plucked out of there, you switched you switched hats, you switched groups. Oh, okay, so when you mean old gang, you mean really old gang. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, the one I ran with before he gestures over at Asena did a little bit of the. Yeah. No. No. Tracks. That makes sense. So Natalie Adams, she wasn't a movie star, right? She's likely that pale, dark-haired Dane. That that matches her description, doesn't mm. it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. So keep your thinking caps on, friendos, and we're looking for a drug dealer and a movie star. Those are the last two on our list here. Well, we can go back to the drawing board and see what we find out, but you guys have plenty of leads to follow up on for the time being. We're missing yeah. one. Yeah. Are we? Oh, no, we're not missing one. Pride hasn't been found yet because we're still looking for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So we're all caught up. That's the last, uh, the last one you have a chance to stop before it happens. So, uh, what happens if we don't find him in time? I don't know what happens when all eight angels are assembled. I don't know what that means. If the army yeah. of the eclipse is behind this, this could all be some huge ritual based again on, on the Zolkwian myth of the eight good thoughts and the eight evil thoughts. But there's nothing to say what happens when they're all assembled. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and guess the people who have been trying to kill us, work with really shady people, probably aren't going to, uh, you know... Uh, solve world hunger, bring world peace when they bring together their nefarious plots. I think we can assume it's bad. Not for nothing, but I am right now, my current theory is that it's going to be some kind of horrible, giant spider god. I mean, eight honestly, legs, eight thoughts. Well, I, I, I see I see where your head's at, John. Exactly. I mean, it's got some kind of weird connection, and you don't just kill a bunch of people and redo a old Zoquian pantheon just to say hi to Captain Planet, you know what I mean? This is gonna be some <laughs> crazy doomsday shit. Who's Captain Planet? He's a guy. <laughs> Children's like cartoon, but leave it at that. I see. Hmm. All right. Well, I mean... But it could um, also be an octopus. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's true. It could, it could be. Look, just, Wait, I feel like, did I imagine this, or does Dr. Zorbius have some, like, octopus monster type thing? He he has an underwater base, and yeah. there have been bodies washing up shore with giant sucker okay. wounds recently. Uh, okay, I knew I didn't imagine that. Yeah, you probably <laughs> would be aware of that from your research. Wait, 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 wait a second. I heard the eight good thoughts alongside the, what are those? Yeah, we haven't researched any of those, like, at all yet. We were looking at the evil ones. But eventually, right. it basically, Tlazol the world spider, when he spun the web and when he spun the souls of mortals, they all had two sides. They had the eight good thoughts and the eight evil thoughts. And we've looked up all the bad ones, 
But we haven't looked up the good ones just yet. Can I... you look up like that whole story at mm -hmm. some point? Because I mean, it's starting to become pretty clear that at least that one side of it is fake, uh, not fake, real. So if there is some hint on how to deal with this from like, what if we gathered the eight good thoughts? Is that where this is going? That, I mean, some sort of counter gizmo? Yeah. That's. They're like, they got seven on us right now, but we could speed run it. That would we be. We kill incredible seven good people. Oh, God. I don't know if that's what we're looking at. But, uh... <laughs> oh. But I like your fight and fire with firemen's howdy. That's a, that's a really good way to go normally. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, if we get some downtime, I would love to use my scholarly um, pursuits to try and figure out more about this. Mm. Maybe or we could start putting uh, Charlie and Grim on it. That seems more like a Ben thing than a Charlie thing. This lore is steeped in whatever the army of the Eclipse traveled to the jungles to find. Hey, actually, uh, Ben, how about this? And I scribble up uh, a quick little note again on a napkin and I hand it to him hastily. Uh, tell, I need you to go down to the uh, university Find Orlin Strickland, let him know that uh, Dr. Snape sent you, and uh, get as much information on the good thoughts as you can. Uh, that I'm putting together some kind of paper or, or something. You can figure it out. Make up a lie. Something that I need it for. I don't know. Good idea. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. The uh, waiter comes by with the check and looks at the table and sort of gives an. Oh, oh. Hey, can you uh, before we uh, before we all take off? Would you mind refilling the mayor real quick? <laughs> yeah, sure, whatever. Grabs it, takes it to the back. Comes back with a fresh pitch of mayor. And I. Uh, Push it on over towards Ben. Yeah, for the road and your troubles, my friend. <laughs> Politics are refreshing. <laughs> Does anyone have anything else to do here at the wound? No, I, I finished my meal and, uh, Pay the tab and, and get on out of here. Awesome. Oh, John's paying. Let's go. What time? Oh, John was paying for his people and himself, but yeah, he'll pay for everybody. If I have <laughs> what time do you want to head to Thornacre? What time of day? What time is right now. Are we looking at uh, late morning? Yeah, late morning. Is this a nighttime operation or what are we thinking? Well, here's the thing. I mean, I feel like. Most of these kind of deals are, are, are nighttime operations, but I don't know if that's like how it's just kind of done or if that's like a urban myth, like, oh, guys, we're going to do a stakeout at night. You know, I, I feel like people mostly do a lot of their stuff during the day. Um, Maybe they won't I, expect us in the day. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, you know, it's just kind of a, it's just kind of a, what do you call it? A trope to do these things at night. I don't, I, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, I like doing things out, you know, when there's light out. So, well, I mean, the people we're dealing with don't seem to like the sunlight, so I think I can get behind that plan. And also, since we have the password, I don't think we have to worry too much about any preliminary sneaking because I feel like we're going to get in instantaneously. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Um, I, I really wish we would have uh, left our buddy Johnny alive uh, to find this out before. But uh, what would be the reason why we'd be having to go back to Thornacre? Because I feel like when we show up with me looking like him, we drop the password, that's all well and good. But unless we're quick and quiet, uh, it's very likely that Giotto is going to find out that Johnny's there. And I'm sure that when his one of his main lieutenants comes a call in, there's probably a reason for it. Well, let's just say I'm banking on Giotto being the one to come call in. Okay, good point. Not a bad idea. So just to get this straight before we go raid the place, uh, we are going to show up. I'm going to look like Gianni Pablo. 
Yep. We're going to drop the password, and you guys are going to be dressed like a couple of my mooks. We're going to make our way past the walls with all the crazy stuff we're not supposed to touch. Uh, we know that there is a sub-basement. Uh, we're going to try and get into that sub-basement, so that way we can poke around and hopefully corner Zorbius and make him answer some questions of ours. However, before, I feel like that is going to be the, regardless of how that goes, that's where the alarm's going to get sounded. The alarm, rather, is going to be sounded. Uh, so before that, we need to find out everything that we can about Dre and Warner. Is there anything yes. else while we're there that we really need to be looking into? Did you have any beef with uh, Giotto you wanted to take care of while we were there? Oh, you let me worry about Lincoln Giotto. Well, see, that's why I, I kind of want to have this conversation, because if we're in the middle of something and you slip off to go do your thing, um, I don't want to be caught with my proverbial pants down going, oh, my gosh, where's Gaston? How long do we have? And then the alarm goes off. I'm, you know, a dummy and don't know what's going on. And so are you planning on killing him? Because let me yeah. just say, great idea, yeah. huge power vacuum, like absolutely enormous power vacuum, leaving the column leaderless. That's uh, yeah, that's fine. The other, I'll I'll deal with the rest later. Point is, I'm kind of banking on the fact that, look, Johnny's been missing what a day now. I think you showing up suddenly this afternoon, hoping gets the man himself to come and see you, and then uh, from there on out, it's easy clap, as they say. They do, yeah. in fact, say that. That's right. What I'm common thinking. phrase in Northport. Mm -hmm. I think what would make sense, especially considering after what happened to Keller Industrial, if Johnny Pablo comes to call into the big boss, he's going to have to give a report about what went down there. So I think yeah, I can, he probably will. I think what we're looking at here is one of a couple things. Either I try and get us in in that regard, or let me double check something real quick, because I think what would be best is if I could make you look like Pablo and then you can do your deal with Giotto while Senna and I go interrogate Sorbius. That sounds so good. You can do that? Oh my god, please. Let me just double check something. And he pulls out his phone and starts flipping through his assortment of spells. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, normally, no. However, uh, DM... <laughs> <laughs> he looks straight at the camera. He stops looking at Gaston and looks straight at the camera. Hey, um, so I've got a, I've got a spell that normally. Do you have inspiration? I do. Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. No, I can do it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I can good make that. Any other considerations before you roll over to Thornacre? How long do we think we're gonna need? Is uh. The, uh, I guess my big question, because I kill Lincoln Giotto, it only takes X amount of time for everyone to realize he's dead, and then, or, or, can you change my appearance and your appearance at the same time? Let me... It is not a concentration spell. Oh, interesting, because now my new idea is... You make me Johnny Pablo, uh -huh. and when I kill Lincoln, you become Lincoln. Oh, God. <laughs> so we get free reign of the place. Literally could not go wrong. I mean, in theory, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but here's the thing, though. It just makes you look like them. I wouldn't know how to talk like Giotto. I wouldn't know what he's got going on. Uh, uh, I'll be sure to I'll be sure to listen to him before I kill him. Okay. So I guess okay okay I guess what we're looking at here then if that's the case we're all rolling together we're not splitting up then. Seems like it yeah. Okay. Asena, are you proficient in stealth? Uh, no. Okay. We are proficient in athletics, so you're not you're not. I mean, you're decent at stealth. You've got a plus two to it, but you're really good at climbing stuff. So if you ever need to split off, consider using altitude and unusual pathways to your advantage. Ooh, okay. Sounds like a cool ability. All right. Let's go ahead and take a five-minute break, off. and when we are back, we will switch over to Thornacre. Don't go anywhere. We are 
Not clear, because I didn't press the clear button. Okay, now I'm pressing that button. 